All right, here are solutions problem 22 off the uh, GRE math subject practice test. So in this problem, you're asked to find the volume of the solid bounded by these four surfaces here. Um, different ways you can do this problem. One way you can do this problem is by taking advantage of the fact that this is a multiple choice test. So if I call, let's see, how should I, let's call this X, Y, and Z. Uh, and I'm going to sketch what the hell I'm talking about here. Z equals zero. Okay, cool. That's just kind of this floor right here. Uh, Z equals Y plus three. Okay, so what that's saying is I have this plane. It has a height of three, but it's getting taller and taller and taller as I go out in the Y direction here, um, in the positive Y direction. Uh, and then I have these two curves, Y equals X squared. So the Y coordinate is the square of the X coordinate. So when the X coordinate is two, for example, the Y is four, you get this parabola shape, like something like this. I just drew it where Z equals zero, but note that this thing kind of goes up forever. Uh, and then two minus X squared. So if I call this two, I got this parabola here. And so really what's going on is I kind of have this region here and the walls extend up infinitely high all over this region, but there's a top of this region and the top of this region is this plane that I described here. Uh, so you're trying to figure out what is the volume of that region. Well, note that this is, I don't know, two, almost three. This is five-ish, this is 10-ish, one, two. So these answers are pretty spread out, right? This is about two, this is about one, this is about 10, this is about five, this is about, I don't know, three, I guess. Um, so if you think about this region here, maybe I'll graph it in two dimensions, whoops. So if I just graph this in X, Y coordinates, I got my parabola here and my upside down parabola, like something like this. Poorly drawn, but these coordinates are one, one. Now I'm talking about this region here. If you had to ballpark the area of that region, well, let's see, this square right here has an area of one. And so what I have in green in this region is more than half of that one. So I get more than half here. And by symmetry, I get more than half here and more than half here and more than half here. This is more than two, right? How much more than two? I don't know. Maybe call it three. If we're really trying to ballpark things. And yeah, I know you could figure out the exact area, but don't. Call this three. Think about what we're gonna do with that thing that has an area of three. If this were just a uh, prism, if the height were constant, if the height were always exactly three, if this plane weren't getting taller and taller and were always exactly three, I would have a base area of three and a height of three, which would give me a volume of nine. And it's worse than that, right? It's more than that because the height of this thing is bigger than three. Yeah, it's three right here at the origin. I guess here's the origin, but the height here is three at the origin. But then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. By the time I get out here, where this is two, the height's all the way up to five. In the middle, the height is four. The point that I'm getting at is the volume of this thing must be more than the volume of the prism that has a base here and a constant height of three. And that prism, we're ballparking the volume to be nine. If it's more than nine, it sure as hell ain't going to be A, B, D, or E. It looks like my answer is going to be C. That's one way you can solve this problem, if you happen to notice that. And that works out fine when the numbers are sufficiently spread out, and especially when your answer ends up being the greatest of those numbers. Um, did they put this problem on here, meaning for you to do that? I don't know. I mean, it's certainly possible, the way they spread these out. What made me even think about that is how spread out these answers were. But who knows? You can also solve this problem using calculus, uh, namely using a double integral. Uh, so the idea there is if you look at this two-dimensional picture, you can kind of describe this surface as all the x-coordinates ranging from negative one to positive one. Uh, and then the y-coordinates, well, they kind of go from here to here for an arbitrary vertical slice. And here is x squared because it's on this curve. So my y coordinates go from x squared all the way up to here, which is two minus x squared. Uh, what about the z coordinates? Well, the z coordinates range from zero to y plus three. So I could put y plus three, I guess I want my dy here. Now I put the y plus three minus zero, I guess, if you really feel like writing it, this is the integral that you're gonna wanna evaluate. And the way you can figure these out, these double integrals is work from the inside out. 
So I'll leave all the X stuff alone. Uh, and for the Y stuff, I want to figure out the antiderivative of Y plus three. That's Y squared over two plus three Y. And I want to evaluate that from X squared to two minus X squared. Uh, I'm kind of low on room. So I'll pick this up down here uh, to evaluate that. So let's leave all this negative one to one DX stuff. That's stuff that I'll deal with later. And now what I'm gonna do is change all the Y's first into two minus X squared. So I got two minus X squared squared over two plus three times two minus x squared. And from that I want to subtract and then all this stuff except changing all the y's into x squared. So x squared squared, aka x to the fourth over two plus three x squared. Uh, and you could take another integral here, although I think it'll help you just clean some stuff up. Uh, so maybe some side work here 2 minus x squared squared is 4 minus 4x squared plus x to the fourth. And this whole thing is over 2. Plus, if I distribute, I get 6 minus 3x squared. And then I have minus x to the fourth over 2. And then I have minus 3x squared. And let's see how this cleans up the plus, maybe switching colors, uh, x to the fourth over 2 and the minus x to the fourth over 2 cancel each other out. That's real nice. Now what about my x squared terms? Well, I get two of them over here, three more here, and three more here, and those are all negative. So in total, I have negative eight of these x squared terms. And then I got two here and six here, constant, so I got eight. So really what this is, is the integral from negative one to one of negative eight x squared plus eight uh, dx. And let's see, maybe you'd notice that this is an even function here. If you do, you could change this to 2 times the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 8x squared plus 8dx. If you don't, you can just evaluate it as is. But if you notice that's even, it'll, I don't know, keep numbers smaller later. Uh, Antiderivative here, I got negative 8 thirds x cubed plus 8x evaluated from 1 to 0. Uh, so what I get is 2 times 8 minus 8 thirds. Uh, 8 is 24 thirds, 24 thirds minus 8 thirds is 16 thirds. 16 thirds times 2 gives me 32 thirds, which maybe you remember from earlier was the answer that was right about 10, which we could have ballparked this thing to be from the get-go if you thought about this problem that way.